1 Corinthians chapter number 2. Uh, we look at that in verse number 1. 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 1, and let's start off verse uh, uh, 14. So if you still water baptizing, and you think that has anything to do with your salvation, you are not in faith. If you think water baptism has anything to do with your salvation, you're not in faith. You're in unbelief. Because only God takes credit for your salvation. All right? And you live in a day where people tell you you got to be baptized in water to be saved. I, and then there's some of them will say, well, I believe it has something to do with your salvation. All that. Well, if you get you them little, them little nuggets like that, that bring unbelief in your soul. It's because you got to understand something. A little leaven, leaven the whole lump. Either Christ paid it all or he paid it not at all. Which one you believe? All right. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, watch what Paul said. We're headed to our message. 1 Corinthians 2, 14, Paul said, I thank God. Okay, we're waiting on our screen. 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, I'm sorry. I said 2, I'm sorry. 1 Corinthians 1, 14. Forgive me. Watch what the apostle Paul said. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 14 said, I thank God I baptized none of you. Do that sound like God wants you to say about water baptism under the Apostle Paul? I don't think so. That's why I'm teaching his ministry. He opened the eyes, opened the eyes. See, people still have this Old Testament, how they were saved. So Paul said, I thank God I baptized none of you but Christmas and Gaius. And lest any should say that I had baptized in my own name. And I baptized also the household of Stephens. And besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. And then Paul says in verse 17, for Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Now, if, if God wants to save you, why didn't he do it that way? He didn't, he didn't choose to do it that way, not in the new covenant. You're under dispensation of grace. Under dispensation of grace means God have to do all the work. It's already been done. All right? He did it all to save you. That's what you got to believe. Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with the wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross, verse 18, is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. So that's why uh, you need to understand the word of God and, and, and stay with this. I'm going to be ministering on this, I thought was today, but it's not so. Let's go to the book of Titus, so we're going to get our subject today. From the book of Titus, chapter 3, God told us how he saved us. We always used to read Ephesians chapter 2 and 5 through 8. It says, for by grace are you saved, through faith, not of yourself. It's the gift of God. But I'm going to come even a little closer to that and show you, you are saved by grace, but my message today is going to show you how God did it. All right? I know a lot of these places he was talking to the Jewish believer, but we're going to be able to gleam out of this also. So the book of Titus uh, after Timothy, 1st, 2nd Timothy, then you got Titus, and we're going to go to uh, Titus chapter number 3, and we want to go down and start reading with verse by, verse 5 is our key verse. So when you get there on your screen, Titus chapter 3, verse 5, 6, 7. Let's just do those three. All right, verse 5 is going to be our key verse. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy. Now he's telling you how he saved you. It doesn't take much to figure that one out. He says, I'm, you're not saved according to your works of righteousness, which is done, which, was, which we do, which we have done. But according to his mercy, he saved us. Say it, he, he saved us. Saved. All right. So if he saved us, then now, see, there's a teaching that say, okay, if God saved us, then we all are saved and we can all go to do what we want to do, live like we want to live, and we already saved. Now, that's not what they're saying. Because if you look at Titus chapter 2, verse 11, let's, we'll come right back there. Go to Titus chapter 2, verse 11. See, that's not what they're saying. That's what people would try to say, keep from believing the gospel of Christ. You're saved by grace. That means that God saved you before you were born. He saved all men. So when you go to people, you're not going to people to try to get them saved. You're going to people to tell them what God did to save them. So now they don't have to try to do it themselves. So Titus chapter 2, verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath, past tense, 
appeal to all men. Teaching us. See, so you don't, you don't blame, don't talk about, well, you know, this, this stuff y'all be doing. Listen, grace, it, when you're under grace, it teaches us to deny ungodliness. Teaching us to deny worldly lust. Teaching us that we should live soberly, righteously, godly in this present world. That's what grace teaches. Grace is the Holy Spirit. God did not give you the Holy Spirit so you can do wrong. He gave you the Holy Spirit to teach you how to live right. See, the whole bottom line is you can't live right without the Holy Spirit. You're trying to live right without the Holy Spirit. Get the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost will live his life through you. Boy, I, I wish I'd have found that out earlier. Trying to live for God without the Holy Spirit. You're not going to do it. All right. Uh, Titus chapter 3 verse 5. We back. Titus chapter 3 verse 5 said, Not uh, by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. Then he going, this is my subject, by the washing of regeneration. So you want to put that down, the washing of regeneration. That is how God saved us. The washing of regeneration. So we have to understand that you cannot improve on God's salvation. The washing of regeneration, watch this, and after that, the renewing of the Holy Ghost. So that's why we were able to get the Holy Spirit, all right, because God washed us, the washing of regeneration, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. So it was Christ who died for us, all right, that being justified by grace, see, you were saved by grace. We should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Now, with that in mind, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We're, gonna, we, we're headed to our message. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we're talking about how God saved you. The washing of regeneration. So you have to understand why I'm doing this, because if you've been in a denomination of churches before you came here, uh, of course, this is a non-denominational church. So if you've been in a, in a denominational church before you came here, you was taught about water baptism. You was taught that you had to be water baptized. Now you can't go get unwater baptized. You've already been water baptized. All right. So you have to understand now that does not mess with your salvation. Water baptism does not add to your salvation or take away from your salvation. What it does is show you do not understand salvation. That's all that means. Okay. Because once you're saved, you don't have, you can't improve. Otherwise, God doesn't wash you off with water to sanctify you. See, that's not what he's talking about. He did. That's why I'm going to show you what sanctification means today. All right. So 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, we're going to go down and look at verse 14. See, this is why I learned the Apostle Paul always says, know ye not. Otherwise, don't you know? You don't know. All the way through his message. All right. All right, because his message was to make sure he gave people knowledge. So in 2 Corinthians 5, 4, uh, verse 14 says, Knowing that he who has raised up the Lord Jesus shall also raise, also raise us up by Jesus and shall present us with you. I'm, I'm in chapter 4. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 14. Thank you all so much. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 14. For the love of Christ. Here we go. For the love of Christ constrains us or controls us because we thus judge if one died for all, then we're all dead. See, that's why it, and Adam all died because one man died. Adam died for us all. But Jesus died to save us. So here in verse number 15, it said, and, it, and that he died for all, they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto them which died for them and rose again. So if you know a man died for you to be free, that will cause you to live for him. God doesn't scare you to live for him. He doesn't scare you to, to be saved. He wants you to know how good a God he is, and now you ought to want to serve him. Amen. All right. All right. And then verse 16 says, Wherefore, henceforth from now on, we know no man after the flesh. Though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now, henceforth, know we him no more. Why? Because we're in a new dispensation. So therefore, if any man be in Christ or in the dispensation of grace, he's a new creature. See, that's all he's saying. In Christ means 
in the dispensation of grace. What do in Christ mean? So therefore, if any man be in the, new, in, the, in, in the dispensation of grace, he's a new creature. So everybody, everybody, see, you, don't, you got to look at them not after the flush, see? God says souls, it's not about flesh in the new covenant. No flesh can drove in his presence. In the new covenant, it's all about souls. That's why the resurrection of Israel was done so you can see them. That's why God raised so many people from the dead in the old covenant because their covenant was visible. See, your covenant is invisible. You've been raised from the dead too spiritually. That's what Ephesians 2, 1 say. You has he quickened, the word quickened means made alive. You were raised from the dead, but it's spiritual. All right, so Ephesians, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17 said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, that word in Christ is, is the same as Old Testament word in the promised land. In the Old Testament word, looking forward to grace. So if any man be in grace, because that's who Christ is, he's God's grace. He's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Old things are all things were natural. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things, this is the verse I want to get to, verse 18. All things are of God. See, everything God did it for you in the new covenant. Everything is of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. All right, down in verse number 21. I'm going to skip down because I don't have a lot of time. Verse 21 says, for he has made him to be sin for us. Now remember, you got to keep that word for us. That's how you know you're talking to Israel because everything was done for them. Us, everything was done. Like, for example, when you talk about he died for our sins, he died for them, but he died for our sins. See, so everything was done for them. All right. So for he has made him to be sin for us. See, who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So we are God's righteousness. That's why I said this morning, just like they God's righteousness, only different is, is how it happened. We are through faith. Everything happened to us through the word, through faith, by hearing the word, believing the word. Always keep Hebrew 11 and 11 in mind. Hebrew 11 and 11, 11, 11 says, now Sarah through faith. And all those people around Sarah, like Abraham, Moses, they are by faith. Because they had to do something for God. But Sarah didn't have to do something. She had to believe. So through faith mean what? Believe. believe the word. So that's why those are the things that, that I would like for you to jump on that one because if that's your salvation. It, all your, everything you get from God, you have to do, get it from God through faith. So I'm, that's why I got to teach you the word. All right. Now, let's move on. I want to show you that, okay? Uh, he was made to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. All right, so now you are who now? You are the righteousness of God in him. Now, let me show you what the word of God says about people that Jesus Christ has saved. This, this is strong stuff you're about to get. Bump somebody and say, this is going to be some strong stuff. Let's go to 1 John chapter 3. Because when I say strong stuff, a lot of people can't believe it. See, there are some things the Word of God can say, and you will be like, in your heart, in your heart, you're like, I can't believe that. You know why? You, you might have to understand, if faith ain't not in your heart, you can't believe God's Word. So I'm getting ready to check you out. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 7. This is what John say to the believers that he taught, which were Jews. Paul taught to Gentiles. And I'm going to show you something similar but I'm, first, let's see what he's going to say. Watch what he says. <clears throat> uh, little children, that's what John called them. Let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he's righteous. See, I gave you a scripture this morning, and it was one that John quotes to the people, and he, and he said to them, in the book of Revelation chapter 14, I read this, and I said they were without fault before the Lord. And it was like, did, he, did you hear what he said? They were without fault. See, the key is you, you're not looking at you as a new creation. That's how I got to get you to your mind. Now, hold your finger right there. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 14. See, you got to understand something. You are a new creation. A new creation means you're without fault. 
But most people don't know. You, you tell them, they'll say they're a new creation. They quote the scripture, but they don't believe what they say. See, the Bible says that, that God has accepted you. Huh? In the beloved. See, you got to see everything in Christ. He's not talking about you, who you are. He's talking about who he made you to be. He has accepted you in Christ. Well, if you already accept it, then God don't look at you as having fault no more. And see, and that's where we having a problem with. That's why I say is salvation has to be with the mind. Now you put this down, I'm going to go to it to start me off today. Romans chapter 5, and we're going to look at, look at verse 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We're going to look at those, put that down, that's one of my notes. All right, so let's, we're in Revelation now, right? Uh, we're going to Revelation 14, that's what I said, right? All right, that's where I left all this morning. I want to show you something, Revelation chapter 14, and I want to, I want to say, uh, let, start with verse 4, I'm sorry. Because I'm showing you that these people say they were redeemed. But let's show you what God said about them. See, what, we, what the Bible gave us the, the covenant for, or the New Testament for, is so we'll renew our minds. So we'll think like God thinks. Because when you've been brought up in religion, all you heard was sin. And you don't think that, but that's where you were most of the time. Everything you did, was, it was for sin. So you got to understand something that gave you a sin conscience. And that's why, that's why you have to now renew the mind. That's why Romans 12, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy acceptable unto God, which you're reading for service. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the <laughs> renewing of your mind. That's what this teaching is about. Everything I teach on is so the mind will be renewed. Now, whether you know it or not, or believe it or not, you have the mind of Christ. It's no different than you having a new computer that nobody ever used. That's a new mind. But if you don't have nothing on it, I mean, you can tick, 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 ain't nothing on the mind, nothing installed. How many understand what I'm saying? So God gave you a new mind, but you got to renew it. You got to get what you need in the mind. The word, the knowledge got to be put on the mind. All right. So that's why I don't sit up and spend my day watching TV. Because I don't want that in my mind. I mean, I cut the TV. I watch TV, but I want to hear because I don't want that in here. Okay. All right. Very little stuff I get out loud. Verse 4. Uh, Revelation chapter 14, verse 4 said, These are they which will defile with women, for they are virgins. These are they, talking about the 144,000. These are they which follow the Lamb. Whether he goeth, these were redeemed. They were redeemed. See, Israel was redeemed. I told you they were the elect. They were redeemed. They were redeemed from among men, being the first fruit unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouths were found no guile. For they are without fault before the throne of God. Now, that's not how you look at your life, but that's how you're supposed to. Because if you still got fault, you still got sin. And you got fault, you still guilty. But you don't look at yourself like I'm trying to get you to. Say, I am God's righteousness. Now, let me show you another part that, that people don't like to say. I'm as right as God is right. See how slow that went? That's all that means. When it gets down to the word, it's hard for you to believe it. You keep saying you got faith. If you got faith, you got faith to believe the word. When you can't believe the word, it's evidence you don't have the faith, not the kind of faith you have in this Bible. Because if I'm, if, if, if I'm righteous, I'm as righteous as he's righteous because he made me righteous. As a matter of fact, he gave me his righteousness and took my sin. But we don't want to go that far with God. We got to leave a little bit. You know how I used to hear folks say, well, we, you know we all got fault. No, you got fault. I'm, I made God's righteousness. See, if you look at yourself like that, you will never, ever walk in the things of the Spirit. Because you have the I'm not worthy mentality. 
You're not worthy. I'm not worthy. I know I say you was worthy. You're not saved because you're worthy. You say because what Jesus did. Let me go on because I want to show it to you. Uh, Revelation chapter 14, uh, verse 5 is what I want. And in their mind was found no God, for they are without fault before God. Said they are, they are. without fault before God. Now let's go to uh, Jude 124. Right there you know, we're going to it now. Jude 124. How, how did they get that way, Pastor? I'm going to show it to you. Same way you got that way. But the key is you got to say what the word of God said about you. And write down Ephesians 5, 27. We're going to go to both of those right now, back to back. Jude, you already in Revelation, going to back, back to Jude uh, 124. Remember I gave you Jude doxology. The word doxology is the last thing he said about me. All right, Jude. See, I'm not going to have a eulogy. I have a doxology. Jude 124. Because Christians don't have funerals. Yeah, that's why I don't talk about you being dead. If you're in Christ, you shall never. Now, that's what he said about you. He that believeth on me shall never die. See, that's what you're supposed to say. Because he's talking to your soul. Because in Christ, 1 Corinthians 15, 22, it said, in Christ, all is made alive. So when God put me in Christ, he made me alive. I'm already in grace. I'm already in, in, in life. Yeah, watch this. Jude 24, are you there? Let's read together. I need you to read. This is why he was saying you're not, you got you to gotta drill yourself with the word. You got your word. You got to hear what the words say you saying. You want to hear me saying it, but I want you to hear you saying it. Amen. You at least you'll believe yourself, won't you? All right, verse 24 says, Now to him that's able to keep me, keep you from falling. Say, keep me. Keep Say, he is able keep to keep me from falling. Keep me from falling. And present me and faultless. Fall. Wait a minute. I'm faultless? Yeah. See, that's what God said about you. See, if you keep seeing yourself with fault, then that's why, how you live your life with your head down. Well, all of us got some problems. No, you got problems. <laughs> see, I see what the word says. I see what the word says. To present faultless before his presence, before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. That's how, that's how you're supposed to be so glad. You're supposed to be exceedingly joyful because he presents he present me faultless before the presence of his glory. Mm, mm, mm. Look, how, look what he said about me. But do you see yourself that way? I said, do you see yourself that way? Right, put another one down, Colossians 1, 22. Where are we going right now? I gave you a verse, Ephesians 5, what? 5, 27. Watch what he said about the church. Now we know we are the body of Christ. And we know he's talking to the first century church, but we know all the word of God is for us and them too. Watch this. For Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26, right? 27. All right, let's back up. Let's back up to verse number 26. This is what he did for us, that he might sanctify. Are you ready? This is what he did for that he might sanctify and cleanse us. He's already done this. With the washing of the water by the word. I told you this morning, word by the word, talking about Jesus Christ himself. By the word. By the word. That he might present us. Now then he's talking about the Israel, the church of God. That he might present it to himself. A glorious church. How does he see you? A glorious church. How do you see yourself? See, that's what matters. Not having spot. Wait a minute now. I told you, we're going to get to some place where you're going to need faith to believe the word. God said, you don't have any spot. Now, don't look at your, house, don't look at your face, man. Don't look at your back. All that other, that, you will see spots. He's not talking about your... Not your body, your physical body, okay? He's talking about your soul. Because you're in Christ. That he might present you to himself without 
a glorious church, not having spot, watch that, or wrinkle. Now you look at your flesh, you, you see one here and there, or, or other such things, but it should be holy. God see you holy and without blemish. Now how you see yourself? Holy without blemish. You can't be going by all this other stuff. I'm going by what he see. He see that I'm holy and without blemish. Do I come short in the soul realm, who I am in the spirit realm? Oh, yeah. That's what the word said. We all come short of the glory of God. We all come short of his righteousness. But that, that's not against me. I am without fault. See, I have to look at it as how he see me or I, can't, I cannot operate in his word. All right. Now, I'm going to go on. I gave you something else, what I say? Colossians 120 something. I don't know anybody writing something. Like All right, Colossians chapter 1, verse 21. See, God has already restored me. I, I'm, I'm trying to move on from that. Everything God did in my life was eternal. See, you got to be able to look at that. I'm, I'm going to show you, I'm going to read something. We are talking about the day, I'm sorry. The, the washing of regeneration. The washing of regeneration. See, you got denomination to tell you today, I'm going to let you Google it. This is what you're going to Google. What denomination believes in regeneration by water? You'll be surprised. You can't say, I can't sit on tape. That's what I'm saying. That's why I want you to do it. But they are, because of the, the name you just said, that's why a lot of other places got that from. That's why they water baptized. They think they regenerate you. That's how you get in Christ, they say. And that's what people are believing. And they're going to die and go to hell because of that, because of what they told you. Because you're not in faith. You're not believing Christ died for my sins. Christ was buried in my place. God raised Jesus from the dead for me. You not believe in that. You believe in the water. That's why we move the pool. We're going to move it out the way. Like I said, I'm going to have Minister Derek uh, to take that whole wall and push it all the way back. Oh, they're going to be stabbed. That stay up there going to continue to walk all the way back around with a cameraman up there so he can look at you on the side over here the same way. The choir is going to dismiss through the back before they can go to the restroom when they get ready. See, all of that's future plans. All of that's future plans. Uh, I know, I know. Patty cake, patty cake. Make us, man. Rolling and rolling. Put it in the pan. I kind of wonder why my parents spent all that time teaching me some dumb stuff that I couldn't use. All right, but Colossians chapter 1 and verse 21. Are you there? Watch what they say. And you... Now, I gave you already 1 Corinthians 6, 11. No, no. I'm going to give it to you another time again. And you who sometime were, sometime were alienated and enemies where? You are enemies in your mind. That's what happened. You are enemies in your mind. When you don't believe the word, God can't work in your life. God told you in the word what he said. And yet you, oh, no, no, I just can't see that. That's why I'm telling, I want, I'm praying daily, God, open your eyes, turn you from darkness to light. You can't see it. You can't see what God has already said in your life. And you were sometimes alienated and enemies in your minds. Oh, my God. Now has he reconciled. And what do you mean by reconciled? The same thing as restored. Put you back in grace and giving you the mind of Christ. See, but you still got that old me, old me, old man. All right. When did he do it? In the body of his flesh, through death, unblameable. Look how he look at you. To present you. All I need you to read. I need you to be a part of this thing. See, I don't want you to just sit there and look at it. You've got to get it, reach out and get it, take it as your own. In the body of his flesh, on the cross, he did it through death to present you holy. Say, I am holy. I am I'm unblameable. I am. Come on, say it. I am, I am. Unblameable. unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Now give him a praise. Thank God for who you really are. 
If you don't like this kind of talking, you're at the wrong church. You need to find a church where there are old me and old minds and everybody just talk about sin all day and look down your nose. And... We're not going to do that here. You're at a place where you're in the midst of believers. Come on, tell somebody. We, you are sitting by a believer today. Yeah, we, you're a believer. You got to know believers. You, you got a church of the believers. We believe the word. All right. Now, uh, what else I tell you? We're going to go to those two things. See, I have to keep my own notes. Like if I tell you, you won't tell me back. And just like, I hear somebody saying something, but I don't know what nobody's saying. I heard Romans 5. Thank you so very much. See how much time I just wait? You know, I, I need to get somebody to sit right here and take notes. Sa Sandra not here today, so I'll have to. All right. Joy got further away from it since I said that. I'm not going to bother Sister Joy. <laughs> Sister Joy, if you want to do that, you're going to sit in the second row right there from now on. That, Every day I look at, well, on this side of the second row, so when I need something, I said, Joy. <laughs> joy, joy. All right, here we go. Romans chapter 5. Are you there? I'm headed to my message. God knows I am. Romans 5, watch what hope does. Make it not a shame because the love of God is. You may not walk in it, but the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. It's, it's shed abroad. You might not walk in it. But it's already been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost, uh, which is given to us. Watch for the next verse. When we were yet, I said we're going to Romans chapter 8, verse 5. I said 5, 5, 2. Mm-hmm. We're we going we to do that, but we're going to go to Romans 5, 8. I mean, Romans chapter 8, 5. I got it backwards, but okay, we're going to do this still good. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man, we warned that to die, but be eventually for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were, come on, talk to me now. We were what? If we were, we are not now. You got to stop seeing yourself as an old sinner. Because that's who the mother folk told you were. We all, you go ask them right now today. See, you will hear me, but you go ask them. What well, Pastor Crumb said, we ain't no sinner. See, that's what your problem. We're all sinners. Saved by grace. That's what you want them to say. If not, you will get up and get out of there. But God commanded his love for us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Moreover then, being now, so he goes on and says, well, but now. So we don't want that, but now we want that sinner. Because we have a, now we can go out and mess up the night. Because we all got fault. We all got a problem. We all human. That's what we run back to. We get back up under the turtle shell and say, but we all human, ain't we? Ain't we all human? People don't want to be, be transparent. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were past ten yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified. Come on, somebody say, I'm being justified. How many know what it means? You mean you're righteous. Watch this. You as righteous as God is righteous. There's only God's righteousness. Don't you know God put on you his righteousness? He clothes you with his righteousness. But the key is, you don't want to look at his righteousness. You want to look at uh, on the shell. You want to get back up on the turtle shell. An old sinner like me up under here, nobody. Then you come out and say, they're all over there saying they're righteous. That's, that's the turtle mentality. Don't want to stay out and live, live like everybody else. Everybody can see you. You got to go back under the head. Duck your head back under the Watch this. When that happened, you were enemies of God in your mind. Remember that. It says, much more than being not justified by his blood, he's telling you how you were justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. That was Israel. For if when, if when we were, 
See, y'all, you're not no more. We were enemies, but we were enemies in our mind. We were reconciled. We were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So now everything happened in, in you because of his life. The spirit of life in Christ Jesus, Romans 8 and T. We're going, to, we're going there anyway. Let's go to Romans 8. I'm headed by message, man. I got to just turn around here and leave y'all alone. Get my, t get my notes back. Romans chapter 8 and verse number 2. Romans 8 and 2. This has already happened. You might not be living it out. I am living. This is my life. This is where I live. I only say about me what the word said about me. I don't, I don't talk this other stuff. I don't care about what that's there, but I'm working on that. I have shortcomings, but I don't walk around saying that's me. That's my old man. He going to have to line up. My wife will look at me sometimes and say, don't say that. I said, honey, I, that wasn't me. <laughs> let, let me show you what I mean. You never heard Christ say he Jesus. Let me, let me talk to you a little bit. They came to Jesus, they came to him and said, are you? He said, you said, you said that I am. Christ and Jesus, Christ was in Jesus. But until he rose from the dead, they did not become one. He came in the name Jesus. See, I'm going somewhere. I'm trying to get your mind there. This is how the Lord lived. Are you the Christ? Tell us. See, if he told them, they wouldn't believe. Because he said, if I talk to you about things from above, you're not going to understand because you're from belief. See, you are of this world. I'm not of this world. And I talk to you about some things from heaven, you're, going, you're not going to like me. That's why you want to kill me, because I'm telling you how it is in heaven. You want me to tell you how it is in earth. Well, I don't sit in earth. I sit in heavenly places. Now, what about you? I sit, that's what Ephesians 2 told me. We sit together in heavenly places in Christ. Well, if I'm in heavenly places, then I'm not going to be talking earthly. I set my affections on things above. What about you? Right. Mm -hmm. So Romans chapter 8. God, I got to go to work. And verse number 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. That's where you are. Say, so that's where I am. See, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. See, you, you may look at the flesh. I'm free from that. Sin and death is in the flesh. I'm not in the flesh. I'm in the spirit. Keep on reading. You'll see Romans chapter 8. It'll tell you. Uh, and verse number, verse number 5. See, it said, verse 4, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not the flesh but out the spirit. For they that are after the flesh, watch what happens. Do mind the things of the flesh. That's what I'm trying to get you out of that. I'm trying to get your mind from the things of the flesh. But they are, watch this, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, they mind the things of the spirit. Now watch this here. To be carnally minded is death. That's the death in the mind. Is carnality. Let me say it. Carnality is the death that's in the mind. So when God saved you, he saved you from carnality, from the death that was in the mind. So when you don't say what God said, this is why I do not tell you what the Bible says. I read it to you. If I use my mind, I'm not giving you his words. See, I can only give you his word or my word. So when I say read, I want you to hear his word. 
There's power in his word. There's life in his word. There's deliverance in his, everything you want is his word. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded. And this is what, why I want you to start using the mind of Christ. Because to be spiritually minded is what? Life and peace. And that's where you got to operate in. That's what Adam operated in before he ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He operated in life and peace. There was no death in him because there was no death in his mind. How many just heard what I said? Where's death at? It's in the mind. Where's life? Right, it's in your mind. Who do you wish? What do you wish of God with? Well, if you don't have death in it, you can't. If your mind is calling, you can't wish of God in it. So that's why my job is to make sure I'm getting your mind renewed and changed and making sure you get the stuff, this carnality out of the mind so you can begin to see clearly. Remember, I'm not just preaching on open your eyes. I'm teaching the word so the spirit will. Every time your eyes are open, you see new things. Every time your mind is open, you know, you know different things. Okay, Romans chapter 8 and verse number 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity. Remember I told you about the enemies of God in your mind? Against God, it has no subject to the law of God, neither it being can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You're in the spirit. So that's why I'm here to make sure your mind is renewed. All right, now let's go to the book of uh, God. I, might, I got so many. I got a few minutes, 15 minutes. I can't believe I wasted as much time, Lord, forgive me. Uh, the wash it of regeneration. Say it with me. Let's go to Matthew 19, 28, just one verse. The washing of regeneration is the same thing as in Christ. In the promised land, if you know, Testament, it's in the dispensation of grace. See, you are in Christ, you mean what? I'm in the dispensation of grace. So you got to see the same thing. If I'm in Christ, I am. I'm in the dispensation of grace. Everything has been restored to me. See, eternal life has already been restored to you. A new creation means everything has already been restored to you. Your inheritance has already been restored to you. God's power has already been restored to you. God, your heavenly glorified body has already been restored to you. God's salvation has already been restored. The spirit of holiness has already been restored. The spirit of Christ has already been restored. The mind of Christ has already been restored. See, all this stuff has been already restored to you. The key is you got to take the word of God and eat it up. All right. Now, let me take you some places that I've been wanting to get to. Matthew 19, 28, one verse. Matthew 19, 28. This is Jesus looking before the flood. Remember, Jesus Christ was before tribulation. Let me say it again. Jesus Christ walked the earth before tribulation. Are, are we okay? All right. So Jesus Christ said, as the days of Noah, right? That was last week. As the days of Noah were, so should the coming of the Son of Man be. Jesus was before tribulation. Remember, tribulation means the flood. Noah was what? Before the flood. Right. But what came after the flood? The dispensation of grace. It's not hot. Okay, let me move on. So in verse 28, it says, And Jesus said to them, Verily I said to you, that you which have followed me. Now he's talking to his 12 disciples. In the regeneration. Now my message once again is the washing of regeneration. So he's telling them in the regeneration. When the Son of Man shall sit upon his throne, I'm asking you a question. Is, was he already sitting on the throne while Paul was ministering? Well, let's go see. Let's go see. Hold, hold right there. Some of y'all are not sure. The book of Hebrews chapter number one. See, this is the thing that people today don't think Jesus is Lord. See, he is both Lord in Christ, Acts 2.36. That's why I keep saying that. He's Lord of all. 
but you have his spirit, that makes you sons. But he's Lord of all. You have his spirit, that makes him both Lord and Christ. So don't think he does not control all. He does not have power over all. What verse I'm going to now? Hebrew chapter one. Thank you. I hear some of y'all be real cute and smile. I would like to be in y'all teaching school. I would ask you, what did you just say? Would you stand up and tell the class? I don't know who embarrassed me. Wow. I just asked her what she said. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. Let's read it. God, who has shunned the time and died with manner, spake in time past unto the Father by the prophet, hath in these last days. How many know that was 2,000 years ago? In these last days, spoke to us by his son. So you know of the last day because he spoke to Israel by his son. Whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made Israel. That's who they were. They called the worlds. All right. Who being the brightness of his glory, and he, Christ, is the bright of his glory, but he's also the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when, come on, read with me now, when he had by himself purged our sin, and what happened after he purged our sin? He sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Mark that in your Bible. I asked you, was he on the throne already? Oh, man, yeah. I can see why you, you, whoo. All right. So he is on the throne, ain't he? I said Christ is on the throne. Say it with me. He is on the throne. Anytime something come up in your life, you're going to say what? All right. So that means he's Lord, right? He's Lord of all, isn't he? All right. Now look at Ephesians one twenty. He is already Lord and he's already on the throne. But when I just read to you, I showed you that. We go back to Matthew 9, 28 again. Uh, we are at Ephesians 1, 20. When you get this, we're going to follow the screen. Whenever the screen got it, we're going to move. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 20. Verse number 19. Back up one verse. Ephesians 1, 19. It says, read. What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us what, who believe? Are you a believer? God, power is for you. Watch what it says. What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe? According to the work of his mighty power, when he raised up Christ from the dead, what, what he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, what he done in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and set him, where is he at? His own right hand where? In heavenly places. Now, where are you? Right, go back to Ephesians chapter 1. This, this is what? I'm sorry, Ephesians 2 and verse 6 what I want. Let's go to verse 5. Verse 6, that's what I want, one verse. Ephesians 2, 6. Now, this is, this is what? I'm trying to get you to see right here. Ephesians 2, 6. Now, I just showed you what Jesus was. Where's Jesus? He's at the right hand of the majesty on high. Say it with me. Jesus, Jesus is at the right hand of the Father of the majesty on high. Right? All right. Now, watch this. Remember, because Psalm 110, he says, sit on my right hand. He told his son, sit on my right hand until I make your enemy your footstool. Right? All right. But watch, watch this. In verse 6, read it. And has... I'm just trying to, would you, would you read, would you read with me, please? And hath raised us up together. All right, when God raised you from the dead, what did he do? He raised us all up together and made us sit together in the heavenly place. In Christ. Where are you seated? Where are you seated? Where are you seating? You sitting, isn't that something? That's what I'm saying. Here you are sitting right beside Jesus. And he keep hearing what you say. Everything he told you, you are looking like the little turtle in the thing. Like, and you see right there by him in the heavenly places. And all the angels and glory is watching you. And you don't even 
own up to what God says. See, what we don't think, we don't think the Lord is watching us in here. But God see us seated in heavenly place in Christ. Go to Gospel of John chapter 3, verse 1 through 8. See, he's already washed you. I gave this this morning, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 11. Can you just put it on the screen for us just for time's sake? First, we're going, to, we're going to John chapter 3, 1 through 6, 1 through 8. But I want you to put one script on the board, 1 Corinthians 6, 11. Now you watch this. Go to verse 9. Start at verse 9. This is the problem. We, we, we don't want to see ourselves as God sees us. We want to see how we used to be. We still want to say who we were because we've been beat down so long with you, old sinner, saved by grace. Why go to church? Why live for God if I'm going to still be an old sinner saved by grace? And I don't think you want to be in heaven, old sinner you. I mean, why would you want to go where people are holding it? All right, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 6, verse 9. Are you there? Now read with me, please. No, you're not. He always say, do you know? And what, this, is, this is so awesome. He going to tell you who you were, and, but he going to tell you who you are today. Why we can't let go who we were. All right, verse 9. I'm going to turn around like you. Watch the camera. Here we go. Know ye not the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, or infinite, abusers of themselves with mankind. Keep going. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor raiders, nor, nor extortion shall inherit the kingdom of God. Watch this verse. Watch what God said about us. God didn't call us all those things. He said you were. Because I gave you 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. One died for all, then we're all dead. I gave you 2 Corinthians 5, 17. You are a new creation. And God said you were all of these things. But I made you somebody. But we don't want to say that. We want to say the one above. Because we say, well, you know I still drink. God not talking about you still drink. He already know you still drink. Well, Pastor, you don't know I got a guy in my life. He's not talking. See, that's what you're looking at. But you would never be what God wants you to be until you start saying what God said about you. Put that, put that back up there again. Watch what God says. And such were. Such were. I was. See, you're never going on if you don't draw the line. I was. That's who I used to be. Some of you might say, well, I still got that problem. You got to draw the line today. That's who I used to be. And the day I'm going to start saying what he says about me. How do I, what am I doing? I'm renewing my mind. If I put what he said in here, what I say is going out. You'll never change unless you begin to renew your mind with the word. Come on, let's say it. And such will some of you. Come on, I need you to. Those who want to change. Those who want to change. Those who want to change. Okay. Because this is not who you are no more. You can't be this and a new creation too. I keep saying the problem with us is people don't want to believe God. We keep saying we believe God, but we won't say what he said about us. God got more faith than we got about us. Because he know what he did for us. Watch this. And such were some of you. But you are, I'm washed. I'm sanctified. I'm justified. See, that's what God said about it. Why can't you say the same thing? Now, that's what God says about me. Where I told you we're going to? For we're not there. John chapter 3. Now, let's go to John chapter 3. Now, in John chapter 3, why is God saying that? Because he already know you've been born again. 
But he can't get you from thinking who you used to be. This is why salvation is so powerful. You're going to need God's faith to believe it. Watch this. John chapter 3, verse 1. Are you ready for this? John chapter 3, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. He was a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. Pastor Crump, you know that word, God. man, I tell you. He get ready to blow his mind. No man can do these miracles except God know it. You, nobody can do these miracles except God be with him. So I know God with you, Rabbi. I want to ask you a question. So Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, verily, I said to you, except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Right out of the, bam! Except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Look at the kingdom. Wait a minute, wait, how do we get on that? I just come and ask you and told you no man can do these miracles except God be with him. So Jesus is going to take it a, a hundredfold. And he goes, look, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter into the second time until his mother won't be born? Jesus said to him, verily, verily, I say to you. Now he's taking it to the max. And he cannot handle it. And this is what happened to people in the church. Watch what Jesus is going to say to this man. Except a man be born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. First he said he can't see it. And now he can't enter it. Now us today should know who the kingdom is in this church. Hold your finger right there. We're going to come right back. Luke 17. This is some things I said you need to mark in your Bible. One of these days, one of these days you know, you're going to get serious about salvation. A lot of y'all are not serious. When somebody walks up to you and tell you you got stage four cancer, you're going to get serious. And I hope that never happened in your life. But this, like I said, this is not a game. See, what we do is we wait until we got a situation that we can't handle and then we want to look sanctimoniously like we got it. You ain't got it. You got to get it now. Just like the winter going to come outside and the ants are already on the ground with their legs crossed. You know why? They worked all summer. That's why God said you got to go to the ant, you slugger. Because when you come to a situation where you can't handle it, you got to have inside what you need to make it. See, that's why I keep telling I, 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 I'm so serious about this. This is so real. I prayed for you this morning. I get up and I pray for you. I don't care when God said pray because I want this to happen in your life. When you get in a situation you don't have the faith, I can't carry you. You can hook, connect yours to mine. I'll take you as far as I can. And I hope you have enough to add to mine and we can get you pulled out that situation. Amen. But you got to understand something. You got to have faith. God gave to every man. Romans 12, 3, he dealt to every man the measure of faith. Now, what do you do with your, you just put it in the closet to your bad day? Or are you working on it? Are you increasing it? Are you making sure it's strong enough to get you out your situation? You get a bad report, you better have it. Or you better have somebody in your life who can hook on to you and get you out of that situation. But you got to at least have some of yourself. See, there's a guy in the Bible with Paul's ministry and Peter's ministry, Acts chapter 3, and then in Paul's ministry, they saw a man sitting at the gate called Beautiful, and they looked at him and he said he had faith to be healed. He told him, rise, stand up on your feet and walk. The man had faith to be healed. That's the key. What happens if you don't have it? Going to church all your life. Salvation is free. Your faith is free. But you're going to have to have it to live in this life. That's what the Word of God says. The Word of God says that just shall, not maybe. That's going to be how you're going to live. All right, Luke 17, 20. When the Pharisee demanded 
when Jesus was demanding the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered and said to them, the kingdom of God coming not with observation. Neither shall they say, lo, he is Christ alone. Oh, no, he didn't. That's not in that chapter. Neither shall they say, lo, here, lo, there, behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Now, if you read another book, it'll say, lo, he is Christ lo, there is Christ. I'm not going to find that for you. You're going to do it yourself. But it's the same story. He said the kingdom of God is within you. Now, you ought to know by now who in you. See, we call him Christ, but he's the kingdom of God, right? The kingdom of God is already in you. Your soul is in the kingdom. That's what the Bible says. It said in Colossians, you've been translated into the kingdom of God, their son. How many know what that scripture? Colossians what? You've been translated into the kingdom of God, this son, Colossians 1, 13. See, all I'm saying is I can't do it all for you. See, I'm preparing myself. Anything happening in me, in my life, I got the faith in me to heal me. To believe God for what he's done in my life. But I can't do that. Every man got to work out his own salvation. That's what, that's what, that's what, that's what bores me, I think. Because I already know you live in this life, live long enough, there'll be a day you're going to need faith. And you better have it. You can't borrow it. That's what a man said. Give me some of your oil. Yeah. One verse, I'm done. Matthew 19, 28. That's what I told you, right? No, I said John chapter 3. I'm going to do that. I'm not, I'm not going to pass this up. I'm going I'm to do it one through eight, and then we're going to get out of here. John chapter three, verse one through eight. My time is already gone. John chapter three, this man from Nicodemus, watch what he said, verse three, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse number five, except a man be born of water and of blood. Now, he doesn't say born again there, but he said born of water and born of spirit, which is the same thing as born again. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. Watch what happened. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not, I say to you, you must be born again. Why is he saying this? Because he's talking about the days before the flood. And he knows the flood is tribulation. And the only way you're going to get, to the, get into the regeneration, you're going to have to be born into the regeneration. So the only way you got in Christ God, not you, had to born you into Christ. Nicodemus thinking, I got to do it. People baptize you in water saying they got to do it. The, re the regeneration is not a man thing. The regeneration is what God did for you. God born you into Christ. You couldn't do that. That's why when you read a few verses above, it said, with man, it is impossible. And yet people miss it. You cannot, you could not be born again. The only way you got a dispensation of grace, God born you into it. The only way you got in Christ, God born you into it. Nicodemus, you must be born again. That's what he's trying to tell him. Nicodemus thinks he's talking about physical birth. And most people who teach this word is thinking physical birth. That's why they water baptizing. Because they think that's the regeneration. They think you're regeneration when you get water baptized. No, regeneration took place 2,000 years ago. Go back and look. When God raised Jesus from the dead, Jesus called the firstborn of every creature. He's the first begotten from the dead. He's the firstborn of every creature. You're not born again today. He born you again 2,000 years ago. You were born in Christ. He put you in Christ 2,000 years ago. When God raised Jesus from the dead, that's when he born you. He put you in his, what you call, regeneration. He made you anew. You go back and look at regeneration. Regeneration is the same word as Reconciliation is the same word as restoration. It's the same word as restitution. That when he made all things new, you were made new 2,000 years ago. You just got to know what God has done in your life. You are a new 
creature in Christ. Old things. One, one verse, 1 John 3, 9. See, you, 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 you think you believe the word. You go to church, put your Bible up in your arm, you look real nice. But when it comes down to the word, I know you think you believe the word. 1 John 3, 7, I read to you, and I'm going to keep reading now, down to verse 10. He said, little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that doeth righteous is righteous as God is righteous. And I said to you, are you righteous uh, as God is righteous? I don't know about that. Wait, wait a minute. You sit beside Jesus. He put on you his righteousness. And you don't know whether you're as righteous as he's righteous. Well, get your righteous self down from there. You understand what I mean? Why would you want to sit up inside God in heaven and don't want to say what he said about you? He made me righteous. Adam made me a sinner. That's why people say they're sinners, because Adam made them a sinner. Well, Jesus made me righteous, so I'm going to say I'm righteous. <laughs> See, you don't, you don't know that. Let me show it to you, Romans chapter 5. I'm coming back to 1 John. Romans chapter 5. See, you don't know why, how people got to be sinners. They said they're sinners because Adam made them that way. But now Christ had made them righteous. They don't even want to say they're righteous. Well, you was as much a sinner than Adam was. I said you was as much as a sinner than Adam was because he made you righteous. But now Christ came and died and buried and raised again from the dead and made you righteous. And you don't want to say you're righteous. Well, you as righteous as Christ is righteous. You was as much a sinner than Adam was. I'm as righteous as he is because I got his righteousness. I don't have no righteousness of my own. <sighs> Romans chapter 5. And verse number 19. Are you there? Put it on the screen for me. Is that what I need? One of need one. For as by one man disobedience. Come on, I need you to read so you need to know what the word said. By Adam disobedience, you were made a sinner. And you run around, you say, I'm a sinner saved by grace. Because that's who Adam made me. But that's just half of the verse. What happened at the cross? At the cross, by the obedience of one man, one man obeyed the Father, even the death, even the death of the cross, so you could be called righteous, and yet you don't even want to say that. Come down, sit down somewhere. God got you sitting in a heavenly place in Christ, and you don't even want to say you're righteous. What you doing sitting up there at the end? The shame to sit in heavenly places in Christ and then don't want to say you're righteous. Well, Adam made you a sinner. Won't you go out tonight with Adam and enjoy your sinful life and die and go to hell? That ain't what you want. You don't come to church to be a sinner. You come to church for somebody to tell you who you are. I'm telling you who you are. You are not an old sinner saved by grace. You are the very righteousness of God himself. As a matter of fact, God called you the body of Christ. I said, God called you the body of Christ. Say, I am, I am the body of Christ. Body of Christ. Do you think the body of Christ is old sinner? You tell me God made me the very house he's going to live in and I can't even say I'm holy, I'm righteous, I'm godly. I'm showing you where the enemy at. It's in your mind. You your own enemy. God gave you his righteousness. Made you the right. You not just gave you right. He made you the righteousness of God in Christ. First John. I'm done with that. This is it. 1 John chapter number 3. Like I said, things I'm saying right now, it blows your mind. You know why? I thought I believed God. That I'm trying to show you. You keep saying you believe God, but just listen to that conversation. One man obedient made you righteous, and you don't want to say it. Hmm. But you, you say what Adam say. Maybe because you've been with him so long. 
The Bible said, in Adam all die. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Watch this. Watch what you're going to need faith to believe the word. First John chapter 3 and verse number 7 again. Here we go. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous even as he's righteous. I can't get past that with you. So let me see, can you handle a little more? He that committed sin is of the devil. The devil sin is from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Watch the next verse. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Oh, did you hear that preacher said? Did you hear what he said? That's why I don't go to church. That man going to tell me, holler, I'm reading you the Bible. Will you look on the screen? Hey, I could put it, put it in the NLT. Put it in the NLT. It's going to blow their mind today. I'm just only going to go to from 7 to 10. 1 John 3, 7 through 10. See, the key is, you still looking at the old you. And 2,000 years ago, he died and God gave you who he is. He took your life and gave you his life. You still think you owe you. That's the enemy of the mind. That's why you, you'll quote, you'll quote Galatians 2.20. Know it. I said right now, I got most of the church know what Galatians 2.20 says. Come on, come on, come on. I am what? That means you dead. See, you still want to be dead and alive. Which one are you? I'm crucified with Christ. Well, that's the cross. Nevertheless, I live. That's not your old man saying that. See, it's not that old man that's alive anymore. You are a new creation. I'm crucified with Christ, Galatians 2, 20. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the, that's the point right there. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. We exchange places. He took my place as a sinner. I took his place as righteous. Here I am sitting up here and don't want to say who he is. Put it on the screen. Put it on the screen. First John 3, 7 through 10 on the screen. Watch this here. I need you to read. I need you to read. I need you to read. Here we go. Dear children, don't let anybody see you about this. We, we are people what's right. It shows that they are righteous, even as Christ is righteous. Wait a minute. Can you say that? I'm righteous. I'm righteous. Even as Christ is righteous. Yes, Christ is righteous. You ought to be because you're the body of Christ. Amen. Ain't that right? Yes. All right, keep going. But when people keep on sinning, it shows that they belong to the devil who has been sinning since the beginning. But the Son of God came to destroy. Wait a minute. He already destroyed that now. See, so he's trying to take you somewhere. All right, keep going. What did he destroy? The sin of the devil. What did he destroy? The sins of the devil. What did he destroy? All right, so he's getting ready to take you somewhere. All right. Those who have been born into God's family, how many that is? How many have been born in the God family? If you've been born in the God's family, you do not make a practice of sinning because God's life, where's God's life? Now you got to get this, I'm not done yet. God's life where? In where? Now you say in them, you're talking about somebody else, what about you? You got to understand the word of God is talking to you. God's life is in me, say it. So when God's life is in you, you cannot, you cannot. See, the, the NLT who wrote this Bible did not believe it. That is not what that says in the, in the, in the King James. Now put it up there in the King James. See, I'm, I want to show you this here because they don't believe it. My point is, they wrote the Bible in the NLT and they don't believe it. They said, if you're born of God, you can't keep on sinning. That is not what that says. A dead man can't sin. See, God's saying you're dead and your life is here with Christ in God. That's why he's talking about a dead man can't sin. He's talking about can't keep on sin. We ain't talking about keep on. 
First John 3, 7. Come on, put it on the King James. Whoever's born of God. First John 3, 7. Come on, read. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness, even is he that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he's righteous. That's why I start you off at. You got to get to that point. Next verse. He that committed sins of the devil, the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God manifest. This is why Jesus came in the flesh, so he can destroy the works of the devil. See, see, King James, let you know Christ came and destroyed the works of the devil. He destroyed that, okay? See, we don't live in a dispensation where there's sin. Amen. Let me say it again. We do not live in a dispensation where there is sin. Sin is in the old man. When Jesus rose from the dead, he took the old body that he put in the grave. It was called the body of sin. And he, he took the body of sin and he buried it. And he left it in the grave for three days. And when he came out, he was not in a body of sin no more. The body was glorified. That's why the Bible said, as he is, so are you in this world. The body that's inside of you is not a sin body. It's not in sin. It's in Christ. It's inside of Christ. It cannot know sin no more. Look at the next verse. Look at the next verse. Look at the next verse. Whosoever is born of God cannot, does not, because you're dead to sin. You're alive unto God. For well, his seed remaining in him. See, this is, what the boy, this is what the boys and the girls and the men and the women go different ways. He cannot because he's born of God. The soul that's in you, that's in Christ, cannot sin. Sin is not in him, it's in this guy. That's why he got to be buried. Romans 7 told you that there's no good thing in the flesh. God is in your soul. You are in God. It cannot ever sin again. Amen. Nothing can ever stain it again. God washed it off. He sanctified it. And he justified it. And can nobody get to that soul again. My soul is saved. Come on, step on your feet. So you don't know what saved is. My soul is saved. My soul been washed in the blood of the Lamb. My soul is sanctified by the Holy Ghost who has sealed my soul to the day of redemption. See, you don't understand a new birth. You don't understand a baby. Out of all the mess that mother goes through, the baby is in a bag. Ooh. I guarantee that baby, if she could talk, he could talk, he'd say, oh, that woman go through so much. But thank God it can't come near my dwelling. <laughs> now, you can, you can see that in the natural. Why can't you see that in the spiritual? Come on, say, I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. My, soul my soul is holy. My soul is alive. Soul is alive. No, sickness. no sickness. No death. See, this is why the other folk could not understand when he said, when God will wipe away all tears from the eyes, he's talking about when he puts your soul in Christ. Your soul ain't crying. Your soul is in light, life, Christ, heaven, everything that God is. He wants your mind to be renewed against the old man. That's what salvation is. So when you come in here, you come in here to renew your mind. You have to look in the mirror and say to yourself, you're better than that. Anytime you come short, you stand in your mirror, you say, look, you be listen, you better than that. That's not who you are in here. That's how you overcome your flesh. That's who you got to overcome, 1 John 2, 15. And this is the victory that overcometh the flesh. You got to overcome this guy. He called the world. And God told you you don't love him.
1 John 2, 15 told you don't love the world. Don't love your old flesh. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in it. Because all that's in the world, all that's in your old flesh, is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And that's not of the Father. It's all flesh in the world. And all of this is going to pass away. But he that do the will of God abide forever. Come on, give the Lord a great big hand. I hope you got all this. I don't have time now. My time is already gone. My time is gone. The door of faith is open unto you.